Continuous Descent Operations CDO, and Continuous Climb Operations CCO, are maneuvers enabled by airspace design, procedure design and ATC, where arriving or departing aircraft descend or climb continuously to the greatest possible extent. Aircraft applying CCOs employ optimum climb engine thrust and climb speeds until reaching cruising level. CCOs can offer both noise and fuel benefits, with aircraft reaching higher altitudes faster and maintaining all cruise stages at higher altitudes, where fuel burn is less than at lower levels. With CDOs, aircraft employ minimum engine thrust, ideally in a low drag configuration, prior to the final approach fix. CDOs can offer both noise and fuel benefits, as aircraft do not perform step descents and therefore stay longer at more fuel-efficient cruising levels. A single undertaking of CCO or CDO compared to a non-optimized climb or descent profile could result in fuel savings of between 50 and 200 kilograms of fuel per flight. In total, ICAO has estimated that the planned implementation of CCO and CDO in Europe could be equivalent to a fuel saving of up to 500 kilotons per year. A single undertaking of CDO can also provide a noise reduction of between 1 and 5 decibels compared to a non-CDO operation. A task force was created in 2015 with the objective of agreeing on harmonised definitions, metrics and parameters for measurement of the impact of CCOs and CDOs in Europe. The outcome of this exercise will allow a harmonised comparison of vertical flight efficiency performance across Europe. The task force concluded that the optimal situation would be to develop a fuel CDO and a noise CDO. The fuel CDO measures the vertical flight efficiency from top of descent to 1800 feet and evaluates the CO2 efficiency of the whole descent profile. The noise CDO consists of three level bands. The noise CDO measures the vertical flight efficiency from flight level 75 to 1800 feet and evaluates the noise optimization of that part of the descent profile. The lower limit is determined by the availability of surveillance data for arriving aircraft. The upper level bands may be used for a more focused assessment of potential inefficiencies in conjunction with the fuel CDO. Both fuel and noise CDOs will be measured in terms of average time of level flight per flight per level band and percentage time of level flight per flight per level band. The task force agreed to evaluate CDOs with flight level defined by a flight segment with a vertical descent rate of 300 feet or less per minute whilst level flight segments of less than 20 seconds duration are not considered in the measurements. When measuring CDO, noise and fuel, a single level segment of up to 30 seconds will be allowed if undertaken at a level immediately prior to the glide slope intersection. In this way, the time taken for such an event will not be treated as an inefficiency. A set of points was developed to measure CDOs. Top of descent is the 4D point at which the aircraft starts descending from the highest flight level during its entire flight profile. The point at which the aircraft profile passes a 200 nautical mile radius from the destination airport is termed A200. In the case of multiple entries into the 200 nautical mile radius, the last entry point is used. Top of descent A200 is the 4D point at which the aircraft starts descending at or after passing A200 and may or may not be the same point or level as the top of descent if the top of descent is found outside the A200 radius. This is where the measurement of CDO starts. However, aircraft may descend from top of descent for many operational reasons, for instance to maintain separation or to seek favourable winds. The task force proposed the use of an exclusion box, where time spent in level flight is not considered an inefficiency if the level flight segments take place at levels at or above 90% of the level of top of descent A200 and for more than 5 minutes. If such a level flight segment occurs, CDO measurement is moved forward from top of descent A200 to a new point called top of descent CDO, which corresponds to the end of the level segment. Level segments of 5 minutes or less in the exclusion zone represent level flight due to an inefficiency in the descent profile. 
Level segments of any duration that take place at a level lower than 90% of the level of top of descent A200 are considered to be inefficiencies, as such a large change in cruising level is not likely to be made for operational reasons. In a similar vein, the task force also concluded that the optimal situation would be to develop a fuel CCO and a noise CCO. The fuel CCO measures the vertical flight efficiency from 2,500 feet until the top of climb and evaluates the fuel and CO2 efficiency of the whole climb profile. The lower limit is determined by the availability of surveillance data for departing aircraft. The noise CCO consists of two level bands. The noise CCO measures the vertical flight efficiency from 2,500 feet to flight level 105 and evaluates the noise optimization of that part of the climb profile associated with noise benefits. The upper level band may be used for more focused assessment of potential inefficiencies in conjunction with the fuel CCO. Both fuel and noise CCOs will be measured in terms of average time of level flight per flight per level band and percentage time of level flight per flight per level band. The task force agreed to evaluate CCOs with level flight defined by a flight segment with a vertical climb rate of 300 feet or less per minute, whilst level flight segments of less than 20 seconds duration are not considered in the measurements. A set of points was developed to measure CCOs. Top of climb is the 4D point at which the aircraft reaches the highest flight level during the entire flight profile. The point at which the aircraft profile passes a 300 nautical mile radius from the departure airport is termed D300. In the case of multiple exits out of the 300 nautical mile radius, the first exit point is used. Top of climb D300 is the 4D point at which the aircraft reaches the highest flight level at or before D300 and may or may not be the same point as the top of climb if the top of climb is found outside the D300 radius. This is where the measurement of CCO ends. However, aircraft may level off before top of climb D300 for operational reasons, for instance to burn off fuel to enable a further climb. The task force proposed the use of an exclusion box, where time spent in level flight is not considered an inefficiency if it occurs below top of climb D300 and the level flight segments take place at levels at or above 90% of the level of top of climb D300 and for more than five minutes. If such a level flight segment occurs, CCO measurement is moved back before top of climb D300 to a new point called top of climb CCO, which corresponds to the start of the level segment. Level segments of five minutes or less in the exclusion zone represent level flight due to inefficiency in the climb profile. Level segments of any duration that take place at a level lower than 90% of top of climb D300 are considered to be inefficiencies as such a large change in cruising level is not likely to be made for operational reasons. In the coming months, Eurocontrol plans to undertake a European-wide vertical flight efficiency analysis based upon the harmonized definitions, indicators and parameters agreed by the task force. This analysis will aim to assess the current level of CCO and CDO undertaking in Europe and identify the vertical flight efficiency benefit pool in terms of fuel burn, CO2 and fuel costs. For more information, contact cdo at eurocontrol.int.